Previously, I showed you how to derive the kinematic equations, and now I'm going to show you how to use those equations to solve projectile motion in two dimensions. So first, let's write down our kinematic equations. V final equals V initial plus AT. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X. And then X final equals X initial plus the initial t plus one half a t squared. Okay, so the problem I'm going to solve now. Uh, so let's imagine that you. Let's imagine that you live on a, let's say a Caribbean island, and there's a pirate ship attacking your fort. So. Here's the ocean, here's the dangerous pirate ship, complete with its skull and crossbones. And you live, or you are in your fort over here. And you have a cannon that you're shooting at this pirate ship to protect yourself. Okay, uh, so the top of your fort is 20 meters above sea level. And for this example problem, let's say that you're shooting the projectile straight out with no, um, at no angle. So your initial velocity will all be in the X direction. And you're shooting this cannonball at 200 meters per second. And since, because of the way I've drawn it, let's say that that is negative. Okay. And the question that we want to solve is how far away can we keep this pirate ship from our fort? So we want to solve for delta x. Now I think the best thing to do when solving these problems is to make a list of all of the variables that you know and the ones that you don't know in both directions. So we have X and Y variables. Okay, so let's start with positions. So let's just define for ourselves that wherever the cannonball is released is going to be our <clears throat> zero position in x. So x initial is going to be zero. And x final is what we're trying to solve for. Our initial x velocity is negative 200 meters per second. Now our acceleration in the x is zero because there are no forces acting on the cannonball once it's fired. And so that makes our final velocity in X zero, or not zero, the same as it was to start, minus 200. Okay. Now in the Y direction, we're starting at a height of 20 meters. We're going to end at sea level if we're hitting the pirate ship. Zero meters. The initial Y velocity is zero because we're shooting it at straight along the horizontal. 
the y acceleration is due to gravity, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we don't know what the final y velocity is going to be. We also don't know how long this projectile is going to be in the air. So if you wanted to just do everything in the x direction, you would look at your kinematic equations and you would see, okay, I don't have the time and I don't have the x final, so I have two variables, so I would need at least two equations. Uh, the problem with this is that if your acceleration is zero, uh, you're kind of killing a lot of your equations. So if you look at the first kinematic equation, if you get rid of, if you set a equal to zero, you just get v final equals v initial. So that doesn't help you solve for x. Second kinematic equation, if you plug a equals to zero, uh, then you cancel out the delta x term. So again, that doesn't help you solve for t. And then the um, the last kinematic equation, um, you would have a t and you'd have delta x. So that's two unknowns. So you couldn't solve that equation. So the way that we solve these problems is first, we go into the y direction. Uh, usually we solve for the time because the time works for both the y and the x components. And then we plug that time back in to the x direction. So if we look at our y variables and we pick, uh, we look at our kinematic equations and we can pick the one that we want to solve uh, this problem. Okay, so we don't know the final velocity in the y, so that might rule out uh, both of the first two kinematic equations, and then all we're left with is the last one. The last one has um, position, and we know both the initial and final position in the y direction. We know the initial velocity in the y. We know the acceleration in the y. So all we're missing is t, and that's what we want to solve for. So this is the first, for the first step, this is the equation we're going to use. <clears throat> okay, and let me rewrite it with y variables just to make it easier to read. Okay, so if we use some things that we know, so we know that the initial velocity in the y is zero. So we can get rid of this term. And now if we're solving for time, we're going to subtract the y initial to the other side. And I'm just going to rewrite this as delta y. And now we're going to divide by 1 half a in the y direction. So that'll be 2 delta y over a Oops, t squared. So now t is going to equal plus or minus square root of 2 delta y over a. So now at this step, you can solve for t numerically and plug that into your equation, or you can just carry through this whole thing. Um, it's recommended that you don't uh, solve for t numerically because any mistake that you make, like plugging a number into your calculator wrong, is then going to uh, be carried through your whole solution. And it would be a shame to get the final answer wrong because you made a mistake in this step. Um, I'll solve for t. Uh, just so we know what it is, but I'm going to continue to solve uh, the rest of the problem using the variables. Okay, so if we solve for t, we get, uh, so plugging in your numbers, this would be 
two, and then delta y is y final, which is zero, minus y initial, which is 20, over negative 9.8. Uh, the plus or minus uh, is only going to be important for, so mathematically it's important uh, for the physics. Uh, we're only going to be solving for something that's going to be happening um, for a projectile motion problem. So we're going to pick the positive root. So this is 2 times negative 20, which is negative 40 over negative 9.8. If you plug that into your calculator, you get 2.02 .02 seconds. Okay. So now we want to take that information and carry it over into the x direction. So in the x direction, we had, we wanted to solve for the how far the cannonball would go. So we wanted delta x. Now we have time. Uh, so let's use the equation that has delta x and time in it. So that would be x final equals x initial plus v initial x t plus one half ax t squared. So the acceleration in the x direction was zero. So that term is going to go away. Solving for x final, we would get, um, and also remember that we set x initial to be zero. So that term is going to go away. Now v initial in the x direction was negative 200. Um, maybe let me plug in. Plug in what we solved for for time over here. So V initial X times square root of two delta Y over a in the y direction. Then you can plug in all of your numbers, so minus 200 meters per second, two times minus 20, and then that square root applies to the denominator as well. And when you plug all that into your calculator, you get a distance of negative 404 meters. And just to do a unit check, so the first unit was uh, meters. And then inside this, we're doing No, the first unit was, sorry. The first unit is meter per second. Then inside of the square root, we have meter divided by meter per second squared. So we have meter per second. And then the meters would cancel and you're left with square root of one over second one over one over second squared. So one over a fraction is that fraction. Flip that fraction and bring it to the numerator. Square root of seconds is just seconds. So now you have meter times seconds over seconds. Seconds cancel and you're left with the unit for meter. Okay. And so, again, this negative sign is telling us uh, because of the way we drew it, here was our fort. We were firing our projectile to the left. Uh, so it would make sense that the projectile motion would give us a 
a negative delta x. Okay, uh, let's take it a step further. So we know the how far we're going to fire the cannonball. Let's see how much velocity the cannonball is going to have when it does hit the, the pirate ship. Okay, so now we know, we want to know the final velocity total. We know the final x velocity is negative 200 meters per second. We want to know the final y velocity because again, the final velocity, total final velocity is going to be made up of the x component and the y component. Okay. So now we remember that we had solved for time. So we know the time. We know the acceleration in the y direction. We know delta y. So we can pick either of the two kinematic equations that we want to solve for the final y velocity. I'm going to pick this equation because the time is not squared, so it'll make calculations much easier. Uh, so the, and we do know the initial y velocity, that's also known. And that is zero. So we're left with a y times t. A is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The time, we can either use the 2.02 seconds that we calculated, or we can again plug in the the variables, which is what I'm going to do because it's better practice. So two, maybe I'll do that before I plug numbers in. A y times square root of two delta y over a y. Okay, so now plugging in our numbers, negative nine point eight. And 2 times negative 20 over negative 9.8. And when you plug that into your calculator, you get a final y velocity of 197.96 meters per second. So if we wanted the final y velocity or the final total velocity, it would be minus 200 in the x direction, which sometimes you'll see written as i hat, plus this is negative because this acceleration was negative, negative 197.96 j hat. And those units are meters per second. Now, if you wanted the speed, which is the magnitude of the velocity vector, <clears throat> you would take these components and do a quadratic uh, equation to figure out the length of this vector. So 200 squared plus it's negative 200 squared but the negative is gonna go away when you square it and plugging this into your calculator you get 281.4 meters per second for the final speed of the cannonball when it strikes the pirate ship
This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.